Hi, I'm going to show you real quick how I like to rig for burbot or ling. I don't claim to be an expert or anything. There's probably a hundred different ways to do this, but this should get you started anyway. These are a few of the things I've had success with in the past. I'm sure there's other things that work, but this is what I've used. Small tubes, um, two to three inch curl tail jigs. Glow in the dark is my personal favorite. I've used this gulp glow before and it works pretty well. Small swim bait style jigs work good. Spoons like Swedish pimples, small crocodile spoons work well. The big secret is to tip all of these with some type of minnow or sucker meat. For setting up dead bait rigs or cut bait, bait rigs, I like using anything from a size 4 to maybe a 1 or 2 watt hook, treble or just your standard bait hook, nothing fancy. If the sucker minnows are small enough, I'll use the entire sucker minnow. If I'm jigging them, I'll just hook them through the, the lips on a jig or on a spoon and jig them that way. If they're bigger minnows or full-size suckers, I'll usually take like a fillet or chunk off or just a little strip. If I'm dead sticking or just using a hook and sinker setup, a lot of times I'll just cut the heads off and use those or cut the tail section off and use that tail section or just take a big fillet off and that works well too. I like using a medium action, light action or even ultra light action spinning rod. That's just my personal preference with uh, six to ten pound test. Seems like usually I have eight on there. That's again just personal preference. I'm not sure how well you're going to be able to see this but a little tip on jigging. Once I know my jig is on the bottom, see all that slack in the line? I'll reel it up real slow to right there. You can see my rod tip, a little bit of tension there. It's right on the bottom. And I'll reel Keeping the jig right on the bottom, I'll reel my rod tip down to the water, and my jig's still just on the bottom. And then I can lift it up, and right there I can jig, and I know my jig is just a couple inches off the bottom. And those burbot, they kind of like that close to the bottom. I'll show you real quick how I like to set up for dead sticking. So here I've got a jig on, but I'm just going to do what they call dead sticking. Essentially, that's just letting it sit down there, not moving the rod. I use these cheap little wire rod holders and I gather some of that wet snow from near your hole and really pack it in well so that when you get a fish on it doesn't end up, it doesn't go anywhere on you. You'll notice too I've got those bells on. Um, most of your best burbot fishing is done after dark so it's good to have bells or something on there so you know when you have a bite. As far as getting my bait set up just like how I want it. What I'll do is once I know the bait's on the bottom and I, I got all that slack line, I'll put my rod in the holder first. Then I'll real slowly wind up that slack until I see my rod tip just start to dip. So get up that slack and right there you can see it's in, right there, it just lifted it off the bottom. And I'll give it maybe one more half turn or so. Just let it sit. And I know that jig is now sitting just a few inches off the bottom. By the way, you'll notice on all my rods and tip-ups, I've got them all labeled. Um, that's part of the regulations. I'll show you how I set up a bait rig. When I, when I put on my sinkers, I'll hold my hook and bait right, right at the start of my rod handle. And I'll put those sinkers on right up by that first eyelet. And I'll show you why here in a second. It's good to know that exact distance. All right, I've got my bait rig in the rod holder again, like before, secured down with some snow, nice. Again, I've got the bells on the end. And again, you can see the slack line. I'm gonna reel that slack line up just until I see those sinkers come off the bottom. So reel up right there, you see the rod tip dip a little bit. So now that <coughs> sinker's just holding just off the bottom. Before, when I measured out the distance between that first eyelet and the handle, that's the distance between my hook and my sinkers, and I'll show you why I did that. So now what I'll do, knowing my sinkers are just off the bottom, and you don't want your bait laying right on the bottom, I like mine just, just a couple inches off the bottom. So what I'll do is I'll grab my line right at that first eyelet, and I'll reel, I'll hold onto that line, and I'll reel right up to the front of my rod tip, right there. Now knowing that that was the distance between my sinkers and my hook, 
now I know that my bait is just a couple inches right off the bottom. Um, as far as my tip-ups go, um, you've got your tip-up line, and I usually tie on, I personally like a long leader. I mean, for these burbot, it probably doesn't really matter. A couple feet would probably get you by. I usually use about a 10-foot leader, but again, that probably doesn't really matter that much. I just tie my, my leader to my tippet line with a simple barrel swivel, nothing fancy. Again, because most of your good burbot fishing is after dark, I've got this one rigged up with a bell as well as a little bit of reflective tape. Um, when you're out there with just kind of a dim headlamp or a, a flashlight, you can really see that, that tape from a distance. It really shows up well. So the first thing I like to do when I'm using a tip-up, I'll take the very end of my leader and I'll attach, what I like to use are these, these rubber sinkers just because they're really simple just like that and it's attached. Um, you can use any type of heavy weight split shots or even a big jig head to do this. Okay so now what I'll do is I'll drop my sinker to the bottom and once I know that sinker's on the bottom you see the slack in the line. I'll reel up that slack kind of down to the water. Now what I'm going to do is reel up just a little bit extra to make up for that six or seven inches it's going to be in the water right about there now that sinker is probably three four inches off the bottom now what I'll do is I'll hold that spot and I'll attach a small split shot now what that split shot will let me do is <coughs> For the rest of the day, as long as I stay in this depth of water, every time I pull the bait up or reel in a fish or whatever, I can always get right back to that exact same depth. I've seen some guys, instead of using a split shot, they'll use like a small, like a, a button, like an old shirt button or something, and just thread that onto their line and move it up and down to mark their, mark their depth. But that's a good way to make sure your bait stays just a couple inches off the bottom. Now I'll take that big weight off of the end of my leader and I'll put on a couple split shot and, a, and my bait. Again, I like using, if it's a small enough minnow, I'll use the whole thing. If it's a bigger minnow, I'll use the head. Or if it's a full size sucker, I'll just use a fillet. So, and again, I just put the sinkers maybe a foot or so from the hook and drop it down the hole. And once I feel my split shots hit the bottom, I'll reel that split shot up, or button, or whatever you might be using, right up next to the spool. I'm ready to set the tip up up. Easy as that. On average, I usually fish anywhere from 15 to 40 feet is where I find most of the burbot. You never know. I've found them anywhere from 5 to 80 feet, but it seems like that that column between 15 and 40 is kind of a standard. So there you go, that's how I rig for burbot. Again, I don't claim to be an expert, but it seems to work all right. And it's at least enough to hopefully get you started. And be sure to check out the Wyoming and Utah boards on bigfishtackle.com. There's a lot of good information on there. Um, the burbot bash guys do a good job on posting information. Anyway, good luck and good luck to the burbot bash guys on Flaming Gorge this year.